Welcome to Sharing Socks, the uh, post-trade deadline edition. I'm Southside Sox duty geezer Lee Allen. With me, my son and West Coast correspondent, Will. And behind him, a picture of Dylan Cease. We are recording this uh, Wednesday morning uh, and uh, hours after Dylan pitched possibly the best game of his life. Uh, just an excellent performance on Tuesday night. And I think... And boy, do I hate to give Tony Larusa credit for anything, but I think Larusa gets credit for it. Uh, it, part of that, which is his decision to bring in more or less a bullpen game on Sunday, uh, to have Jimmy Lambert and uh, Renato Lopez pitch, and even though they wanted whether they wanted it was material to create two off days because there's an off day on Monday, which meant that the starters get six days rest because I mean, we've hammered over and over. He's overworking the starters far more times than they pitch more than a hundred pitches than anybody else in baseball and more than twice the league average. And you can't have these guys worn down come October, August and September don't matter. The Sox can almost not win a game in August and September and make it to the playoffs. Uh, but I think he's got to do what he did there, which is when they get a day off, take advantage, rest them extra time, do it another two, three times uh, before the season is over. And at least in the case of Cease, it worked out very well. We'll, we'll see how it works with, with everybody else. But I, I think it's something he's just had. They were all looking worn out. Uh, Rodon was worn out. Lynn was, was worn out his, his, his last time out. Keiko, I don't know if you can recover him. I mean, they all just look worn out. Yeah, as has been warned because of the short season last year. Uh, and he's got to do this, and I'm glad he started to do it. Well, it's 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 not just the short season thing from last year. You know, the, these guys are major league players. They, they've they played full seasons before. Um, they, they know what they're doing. But you have to remember that all of these games are coming at the hottest and most humid time of the year. And while the humidity is good for the baseball itself, uh, it's really taxing on pitchers. They are they're sweating from the first pitch of the game, and you know when you're pitching and it's it's 95 with humidity at, at 71 percent, that is going to take a lot out of you. It's really hard to even hydrate as the game goes when you're talking about that level of heat and humidity. So oh, everybody is going to start to wear down really badly, and that's what we were seeing. And we were definitely seeing it from Rodon, even a little bit from workhorse Lance Lynn. Keuchel, I think you need to, I don't know if you can put him on the IL for a little while or what you can do, but Keuchel is gassed, it seems. And it is hard to recover when you're dealing with this level of heat and humidity. So I think we need to see quite a few more of these bullpen games. I think um, it, it's crucial for this starting uh, rotation. It's also crucial for the bullpen to throw some of these mid-range guys, Lopez and Lambert out there who, you know, may not crush it, but will eat up some innings so that when you throw a bullpen game, you're not throwing your best bullpen pitchers throughout that whole nine innings. Uh, I was, of course, really impressed by Ronaldo Lopez in his last yes. out. Yes. Um, I, you know, I've always liked Ronaldo Lopez. I don't know why he's never really been good. Occasionally, he has had an incredible game for the White Sox. I think we probably talked about this way before last season, even uh, just that, you know, the guy does have the ability to go out there and shut a team down. It's just once out of every seven or eight games, which is not a great percentage. However, maybe this three inning thing out of the bullpen is going to be his sweet spot. We don't know. You know, and it, it, it could be, uh, there's, there's a different psychology, obviously, between being in the bullpen and being a starter. If you're a starter, you know you're going to be a starter. You know you're going to be a starter for days in advance. You really know you're going to be a starter all day. You're a bullpen guy. Well, you got to be ready every day, but you have no idea for sure what day you're going to be called in. Even if you're the closer, you don't know what the situation is going to be in the ninth inning. Or, uh, Absolutely. So, it, yeah. it's, if, if he's a fretter, if you're a worrier, uh, being a starter is, is, I think, much more difficult. Now, I've heard people say in order to be a good reliever, you have to be brain dead. 
um, because you know, at the time, see, so you come in with the bases loaded, nobody out, and have to get out of it. But uh, but it is it's it's a whole different mentality, and 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 maybe maybe it'll work. Yeah, and he, you know whether he's a a warrior or not, you know it's it, he may not even be a warrior as much as just you know that pattern starters have very particular patterns of how they have to work and the on their off days and how they have to prepare for the game and you know it's possible that he over prep yeah he's over prepped he's a little tired when he starts but with this bullpen start he knows he's or not start lambert started but with the bullpen day he knows he's probably not going to throw more than three innings which is very freeing to tell you that okay, we just need all you've got for three innings instead of we need you to get us six innings, seven innings to give other guys uh, rest in the in the bullpen. This one is just, we just need you to go out there and do your best for three innings. If we win, we win. If we lose, no one really expected us to win. Uh, and I, I think he did a great job. Lambert did a nice job. Uh, Kopech is, is looking a little tired in the little. bullpen. Um, yeah. so I would like to see even more use from, from some of the other guys, because Kopech is one where I would say, oh, he is really not used to pitching many innings right now. He is really not used to it well, after well, taking Rodon is in there too. <laughs> right. And Rodon has, has just excelled in an extraordinary way. And he's just a beast. Um, but he's, he looks tired. He looks really tired. Yeah. So uh, I, I think this is crucial. And if Ronaldo Lopez ends up being like the guy that helps get us to October, he's, I would think most likely he's not on a playoff roster. Uh, but wow, what a what a cool thing that would be to add to this season of really cool surprises and, and guys you never thought would step up coming in to step up, starting with your mean. Uh, and now seeing Ronaldo Lopez, I, I would love for this to be his role in this World Series team because you know if they win it all, he gets a ring. So uh, love to see him, love to see him earn it. Very cool. Meanwhile, uh, we just went through the trade deadline. The absolutely horrid, besides the White Sox, Triple A L Central, has got harder. <laughs> it's, I mean, the Sox. I, I don't know how you lose a game to Cleveland. We lost one of the Cleveland 12-11. How did Cleveland score 12 runs? The other batters, except, <laughs> except what's your name? Uh, they, they give away two other top four hitters in, in Cesar Hernandez and um, uh, Eddie Rosario. Um, they're, and they were nowhere anywhere because that largely, partly, it's not the end of spot they were where they were. It's, it's the huge end of, uh, injuries to their whole starting pitching staff had disappeared. But still... They gave up. Uh, Kansas City did not give up a whole lot. I think just Danny Duffy and well, Jorge Soler at something. Soler tends to hit us really well. Yeah, uh, that's, good. that's good for us. Uh, Minnesota did a complete. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, the Rios, they had next year and they've given up. It's just like that's a whole collapse. We don't want to play baseball anymore. Um, and of course, Nelson Cruz, who goes out as a rental, but uh, that's great for the Sox. Barrios, Mows down the Sox and Cruz kills us. So, so really, the Sox should win every game in the rest of the, the rest of the division for the rest of the year. It won't happen because of the vagaries of baseball. But really, should should win every division game. I, I think the realistically, year. they should lose three games in the division for the rest of the year. I think, and I know that baseball can go any way, any given day. But those teams are so pathetic now. It is mind blowing that those are four major league baseball teams. It, you know, you and I have been preaching this for a long time that, you know, we just got to do whatever we have to to make sure the team is ready by the playoffs because we're going to the playoffs. There, there is no doubt that this team goes to the playoffs. I think the the Sox could win eighty one games and go to the playoffs. So yep. the the key thing is just getting that team right for the playoffs which talks about the last thing we were talking about with throwing out a bullpen game every now and then to to rest your pitchers but it is wild wild how bad the al central is now i mean it's a it's yeah. a joke it's a joke it, it, it is, it, it's a horrible thing and it is it is the the very dramatic part of what baseball is doing to itself with the tools and the way and the way it works 
the other divisions do not have four horrible teams, but they have at least one and usually a couple that, that are just terrible, have no intention of winning. I mean, the players obviously intend to win when they're on the field and the manager intends to do the best he can to bring about a victory, but the ownership has no intent. Yeah. Um, and they've got to do something about it. They've, they've got to. I, and I know what the solution is, which is well, well, could never happen in a million years, which is relegation. It, it works yeah. great at soccer. <laughs> you know, you end up at the bottom of your division, whoop, whoop, you're back, you're gone down into a, a subcategory. It would make it a minor league, but make it like 4A. <laughs> yeah. And you play there for a year until you play your way back. Yeah, that would cure a whole lot of things. Obviously, that can't happen, never will happen. But they've got to do something somehow, somewhere to punish teams for not really trying to win. I, I totally agree. And um, I actually want to take a, take our break here because I want to actually dive into this a little bit more at length. I don't want to uh, lose the opportunity to talk about this. So let's actually take a quick break. And then I want to come back and I want to talk about the Cubs um, because, you know, I hate, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate the Cubs. I hate talking about the Cubs. However, we need to talk about what they did. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with. I think I think you and I are pretty much in agreement about it, but a lot of people aren't. And I, I really want to dive into that. So we're going to take a real quick break and we'll be right back on Sharing Socks. All right, welcome back to Sharing Socks. Uh, we started talking about some trade deadline stuff uh, before the break. And... It, this year's trade deadline, which was wild. I mean, I think we can agree it was fun to follow. Uh, oh, it's a whole lot of fun. The aftermath isn't, but it's, it's a whole lot of fun. For it's, it's a lot of it came fun to follow. Times. It was very exciting to to watch the different guys end up where they ended up. I think a lot of guys really did end up in much better situations. Um, but I want to go from Sox right now, who... I actually think did a, a decent job at the deadline. I'm glad we didn't give up a ton um, for for these little pieces that we need to just get us to yeah. September. And, and Tapera, Tapera has had a couple of rough starts, but maybe just too much adrenaline pressing a little with the new team. We'll, we'll see yeah. over time. And, and we don't uh, need him to be we don't need him to be a hero. We just need him to be a guy who can eat up some innings later in the game to get us to Kimbrel and, yeah. and Hendricks and <laughs> Kimbrel. Kimbrel just has looked awesome. Kimbrel is, a, I mean, that's a huge get. There, there's no way around it. We, we obviously lost Nick Madrigal. Uh, that is a, a strange piece to lose. It felt like a big part of the Sox future. However, the ceiling on 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 Madrigal, and I've said this from the start, is not that high. He, we know what he's going to do. We know what he's going to be. He is going to be a great Major League Baseball player for years. But he is not the guy that we need to t get this team over the hump to win a World Series. And I'm bummed to lose Madrigal, but I also think in the long run, it's going to be fine. If we eat dirt on that, he's at least a guy on the Cubs that I can like and cheer for. He's going to be on a terrible, terrible Cubs team for the next decade or so. Um, so l that brings me to our, our our talking point here, which is talking about the cleaning of the house that the Cubs did. This was brutal to watch in a lot of ways. And they got rid of Baez, they got rid of Bryant, they got rid of Rizzo, and to all my, my Cubs they fans- They had gotten rid of Tanaka before. Right, and to all my Cubs, Cubs, uh, Cubs fan friends, uh, those guys aren't coming back. You know, a lot of them are saying, well, maybe we'll re-sign them in the offseason. No, 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 no. It's not going to happen. They're not about to shell out money to Rizzo, Baez, and Bryant after doing this. And That they weren't going to shell out before. Exactly. And if you are committing to a massive rebuild, which the Cubs basically just said, screw you fans. We are going to suck for the next seven to eight years. And I'm honestly not that impressed by what they got back for those guys. Um, it's it's not a bad haul, but, you know, Madrigal is kind of the star of that package in a lot of ways, which when you look at what's gone, ooh, uh, I don't know about that. But it is it is shameful to have a team that won the World Series. I, again, 
this comes with the disclaimer that I do not give a crap about that team and what they do. However, I have a lot of friends who do. And to see that team completely decimate itself when they actually probably could have gotten a couple more pieces to become contenders again and stay contenders over the next few years, and they just didn't do it. It was not, we can't do it. It wasn't the the owners of uh, TD Ameritrade didn't say, oh, we can't do it. What they said was, we won't do it. And so yeah. all these little kids out there wearing their Chris Bryant, their Anthony Rizzo, and their Javier Baez jerseys are now having to learn about capitalism from their parents and and the greediness of owners in major sports. And they're going to say, oh, sorry, your heroes aren't on the team anymore because they wanted two single A players in return. I mean, come on. I, if, if I was a Cubs season ticket holder who cared about baseball, I realize some of them are just there to, to drink incredibly expensive beer. But um, some of them care about baseball. I mean, we, you know, I, I now live, you did live within a few blocks of Wrigley. And, and we see them out there. And yes, a lot of them are the drunken frat boys puking on the sidewalks. Uh, I don't know where they get the money for beer that expensive, but they do it. And a lot of them are dads and moms bringing their little kids and their jerseys, and the kids are so excited. And and, and you say it, they're Bryant jerseys, they're Rizzo jerseys, they're Baez jerseys. Uh, yes, there are always trades. Your heroes are often going to go, but not on mass like that. Yeah. And and part of it, I I the, the Cubs are supposed to have had this great brain trust. And yes, we ridicule our front office guys because they've made many mistakes. They've done some good things, they've done some bad things. They're just supposed to be geniuses, right? That 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 comes from an office is supposed to be just a collection of geniuses, uh, from Epstein to Hoyer. And yet they had let it go so that their major stars all became free agents in the same year. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you not extend somebody along the way so you have a staggering of, of this event happening, not all of it happening at the same time? That's total incompetence from Epstein, and maybe he didn't care anymore toward the end, certainly from Hoyer. Glad to see it. It's great for the White Sox. I, I would hope we sweep this weekend. Now watch, we we'll lose two out of three or something. But uh, it's, it, I totally it's, agree. It's, I mean, it's sad you, to see it happen to baseball. When you have three stars who are all going to go into free agency at the same time, that move was a commitment to a rebuild in the future and in the near future, which is, and I know that a lot of the Sox Twitter people, even a lot of the Southside Sox, the stats people that kind of drive me crazy these days are going to say, well, it's what the Cubs needed to do to, to rebuild. Well, the Cubs are a major market team with endless funding, endless funding. They Worth should, twice what the White Sox are. They should never not be contending. When was the last time you heard the Yankees say, we're just not going to contend? When was the last time you heard the Dodgers say, we're just not going to contend? It doesn't happen. It is an embarrassment that the Chicago Cubs probably the third most valuable or no behind the Red Sox, the Red Sox, Red Sox almost never rebuild. And if they rebuild, it's usually One by year. <laughs> it's usually by accident because somebody, a few guys disappoint. So this whole thing of, of rebuilding a team, probably the fourth most valuable team in major league baseball, I would think at least top six, you know, I, I think four. you should never, ever be rebuilding when you're talking about that big of a fan base and that much money involved. The well, and as you know, they now own most of our of, of Lakeview. So. Yeah. And, <laughs> and their own TV network. Basically, what the Ricketts have said is, we're not going to pay for this team to be good because these fans are sucked in. We've got them. They come and they shop in our mall, and then they go drink our $20 beer, and that's what it's going to be. And they're going to do that for the next seven or eight years with a team that's gonna be in the basement of a terrible division. And while I love that it has opened the door for the Brewers who- Well, they won't be in the basement because the Pirates will be below them. But the Pirates who are a market that might need a rebuild because Pittsburgh is not 
a, a huge baseball market necessarily. And it's tough to get the big names to go to Pittsburgh. You know, they make sense. Their rebuild's going to be ahead of the Cubs. So the Cubs are actually going to be behind, I think, everybody two years from now. It is really, really disgusting. And I know that there are going to be the, the stat people, the, the prospects people are going to say, well, no, this is what they need to do so that they could be good again and have another shot at the World Series in, in 2027. And it's like, yeah, no, we know that. We know that, guys. It's just that there is sort of, I don't know, a romance of going to see good players play baseball on your favorite team. I might be a, a sucker that I still like watching good players play on the White Sox. It's one reason I'm particularly excited this year. Um, but, you know, you and I always said this. When, when the Sox were absolutely terrible and there were always thoughts of, well, what if they unload a Abreu at the deadline? You and I said every time, if they do that, there's no reason for anyone to go to the ballpark anymore because Abreu was like the one guy who we kept seeing every year, the one guy, that little kids, and then Tim Anderson once he started getting hot. But for a while, it was Jose Abreu. And it was just, if you got rid of Abreu, there was no reason to go watch that team anymore. You just had that one guy to keep it together. The Cubs don't even have one guy anymore. They kept none of them. And I can tell you, they're not coming back. Once you put Rizzo in the Yankee jersey, he's gone. Bryant, who apparently grew up a Giants fan, he's gone. Uh, Baez, you don't even really want him back, I think, on a huge contract. Someone else is going to spend the money. It is ridiculous. It's shameful. And it ruins this game. And I think that you're exactly right, that something has to be done. Relegation is the answer. It will never, ever, ever happen because okay. obviously people care way more about money than they do about putting out a competitive sport and an interesting sport. You know, I, I saw an article, and I, I don't know the accuracy of it, where Jeb Hoyer was blaming the players for being too greedy, and that's why they didn't have extensions. And the ones we've seen, the offer to Rizzo was like half of the comp of a comparable player at the same age and the same production, even forgetting he's the total face of the franchise. It's yeah. like, it would be like, it's like the, the Sox just going, hey, Jose, you want to you wanna go? <laughs> go ahead, you know? He's the- Anyhow, he's, you're, you're he's ranting the raving enough about the guys. We just want to beat him three times this weekend. Speaking of, of, of top players, you know, this uh, next man up thing, the Sox offense, we talked about the pitching, the Sox offense has worked great. I mean, the latest, latest one was uh, uh, Brian Goodwin uh, coming up with, with the big blow. Brian but, Goodwin and the uh, the bat flip seen across <laughs> the world, I think. That bat yeah. flip, wow, I, I got to say. Because the guys, and we, we're just talking about Jose, the guys we expect, the big dudes are not hitting. Jose was, he's three for 33. And that includes a hit last night. Tim is six for 38 after going three for four last night. He was three for 34. Um, Juan Moncada, six for 44, even though he had a three hit game a couple of days ago. Eloy had that huge home run his second day back. That's what he's had. He's two for 15. It's the little, we might call the little people. Some of the little people are very large. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's of course it, it it was your mean for a month and a month and a half really April and and into May consistently but it's it's been people like Goodwin on occasion but Goodwin not so much but Cheats and Angle Lamb had a couple games where he was the absolute key guy on, um, on the he's okay. back he's he's Lee Uri, back. for all his weaknesses has had some days when he had the absolute key at back Billy Hamilton not just defensively where he's like a miracle worker, but, but offensively, he's had some very key hits. Uh, and of course, Sebi with his, with his three homer barrage, which may end up being his career home run total in the major leagues. Yeah. Um, I, I was wondering just a, I mean, some days are just like that. And he's gone back to kind of, kind of normal, but hopefully he maintains. But I remember when I was a freshman in high school, I had a day when I was 10 for 10 from the floor of basketball. In a, in a regular freshman basketball game, it was 10 for 10. I haven't been 10 for 500 <laughs> since. Yep. There are just days when, when the basket looks like it's 500 feet wide or the ball I, I looks like a watermelon. I remember from my, my sixth grade basketball day, the, 
the one time that all of our shooters, we had all these great, like future potential college basketball type guys, and none of them could hit. And I scored 14 points in the first quarter. I was seven for seven. I tried to swish all seven shots. I banked all seven. Uh, they all went in, and that's the reason we won that game. I missed every shot after that for the rest of the game. I stopped shooting after the second quarter. But it, it does just happen. And to be fair, Sebi, you know, obviously he is not your long-term answer for a major league catcher, but that's why we have Yasmani Grandal. Um, but, you know, he's hitting 229. His on-base percentage is 349. That's not the worst, you know, that's not the worst. And of- and, and and the most important thing in a catcher, he, he's very, very good defensively. As the opposite of, I mean, Zach Collins is horrible defensively. He's yeah. horrible. So I would hope when uh, Grandel comes back, if we only keep two catchers, which I think is going to be the case because they're kind of overloaded with other position players. Yeah. I hope somebody's going to stay. I mean, it, it really I, could it be. It could be Collins just because he's left-handed. Which it that is, it, it's bogus if that's the case. I mean, I definitely think it could be the case. Collins, you got hitting 208. He's batting 20 points lower. His on-base percentage is 11 points lower. Uh, his slugging is far lower because of Sebi's four home run game, I'm sure. Um, I I would keep Sebi at this point right now. I love the way he looks behind the plate. I love his energy. He's handling pitchers really, really well. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean what he's calling pitch wise. I just mean he is handling the different personalities and the different mentalities and attitudes of these pitchers really well. You see it in his body language behind the plate. There is a theory that I have that you probably also have uh, that everyone probably has about these little guys stepping up. And that is they're playing to stay on the team. You know, we are we are loaded with guys right now, not necessarily loaded with all great guys. But when your stars are all slumping and all the little guys have to win the games, the little guys are playing to stay on this team in October. You know, Moncada, Anderson, Abreu, they're going to be on the team. They don't have to worry about it. Eloy, he's going to be on the team. Luis Roberts, when he comes back, if he starts 0 for 25, he's going to be on the team. It doesn't matter. But Brian Goodwin might not be on the team. Billy Hamilton might not be on the team. Jake Lamb might not be on the team, probably won't be on the team. Sebi Zavala, he is fighting to say, hey, I need to be better than the guy that they will pick only because he's left-handed. And so far, he has done that for me. I think he has been a really, really nice backup catcher. Uh, Obviously, I want Grandal back. I want Grandal healthy. He's a far better overall choice. But Zavala, if I had to pick right now, he goes to the playoffs with the team and Zach Collins does not. I'm seeing a little more upside from Zavala and I'm seeing way bigger downside for Collins. I'm not seeing anything from Collins that tells me he'll be good on the big stage. Zavala seems hungry. He seems like he really wants to be there and he's got a lot to prove. And, you know, if you go out there and you have a three homer day, I I don't know what to tell you. You deserve to be the backup catcher. You deserve to be out there. And so the little. You know, guys- and, and, it, and it can be that, that one of the reasons for that is that the league is not paying attention to him yet. Uh, that, that happens a lot with guys who come up and then I mean, a book has not been made. And once a book has been made, and Collins is in this situation. Once, once a book has been made, all of a sudden the guy or Mercedes who, who was hitting 300 is, is, is now hitting 180 because they learned that, uh, you know, he can't hit high and tight or he can't hit low and away or well, he can't hit a certain here's, sequence. Here's the big difference, though. With Zavala, you have to make a book. With Collins, nobody ever had to make it. He started one for 16 in his pro career. No one ever had to make the book. No one ever had to be worried about what Zach Collins might do if you throw him the wrong pitch. At least with Zavala, people are starting to have to look at him and be like, well, we can't give up three homers to this guy. So we got to figure out which pitch he can't hit. And I'm sure there is one. But for the time being, I would take Zavala over Collins, hands down. I, I just, I'm excited by what these little guys are doing. Goodwin's home run. I mean, look at the excitement that guy brought to that ballpark. 
and brought to himself and brought to the team. That bat flip and his excitement, he's not faking that. That's not for show. That guy is no, that, that yeah, that, that was not that was not a staged one. That's a holy cow one. <laughs> yeah, that was I did it. I've worked my whole life to get to a moment like this. I did it. I want to be here. I'm showing you. I want to be here. I said when they picked him up, even though he might not be a great player, he was a good fit for this clubhouse. And I think that that has proven to be correct. He fits in with these guys. I also, I love seeing um, black American baseball players in these big moments. It bodes really well for young black players, little kids who are, who are learning the game. Uh, it's great to have Tim Anderson. It's great to see guys like Billy Hamilton, Brian Goodwin, just these, uh, these amazing black players who are doing these great things in big moments. That stuff really matters. It's the opposite of trading away your stars. It's letting these guys have a chance, give them a chance to shine. Little kids see that and they say, hey, baseball might be the sport for me. And that is what we need for this sport to survive in the future. We need those kids to look at the sport, see that excitement, see that energy, see black men succeeding and, and, and having a crowd of 30, 40,000 people cheering for them. That's what's going to bring little kids up the ladder into Major League Baseball, and that's what I want to see. That's what's going to keep this game great and keep it going. On that note, we got to end here today. Any final thoughts from the geezer? Yeah, let it, let's let us make the Cubs pay for being what they are and pay dearly over the weekend. That would be great fun. I would like to see from the White Sox this weekend thirty runs for for them, not against them. I want 30 <laughs> runs over the three games, 30. And only give up three. I don't care if we give up 22, as long as we win <laughs> all three and we give up and we get 30. I want to smash the shit out of the ball. I want there to be no doubt any of those games who the better team is, and I think it's going to happen. So that's all we got for you on Sharing Socks today. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time on Sharing Socks.